forgive her for exposing what I did to her. Mm -hmm. that, that's the arrogance of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she'd have no story if I didn't give her the storyline. Jabo Brad next. Jabo Brad. <laughs> I'm coming to understand why people like Jamo Bryant. All right, Pastor Jamo Bryant is a senior pastor of uh, New Birth in Atlanta. He's an activist. Uh, he's, he's everything, you name it. He's a big church. He's out there, okay? And <laughs> too much uh, fashion show at his church. That's what other people call it. So Jamal Bryant also find himself uh, in a similar situation once upon a time where he had a public, uh, he had a public divorce, public cheating, all those things. So according to him, he's also repented all those things in his past. Now he's engaged to his co-pastor, Carrie Turner. Okay. Women do not belong in the pulpit. So I don't understand why he has uh, women pastors as a co-pastor. So I'm going to share with you what uh, Jamal Brandt shared uh, in terms of his, you know, his situation once upon a time. Okay. So he is Pastor Jamal Bryant. Hey, listen here. Uh, Y'all don't want to fight. Hey, we don't want to fight. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, hey, yeah. I mean. Yeah, the, the, the continuity matters. Mm -hmm. it, it matters of who it is that you connect and are you in divine partnership for where you want to go? Mm. Yeah. And a lot of preachers make the wrong mistake because they marry based off of where they are and not where they're going. Yeah. And then once they get there, they realize this wasn't it. Yeah. yeah. So as you as you now know that you operate in seventy percent, do you yes. posture your heart and prepare for it? Like yes. on this level, yes. it's got to be tough to date. It's got to be I tough. I owe to it to God and I owe it to my children yeah. for them to see me in a healthy relationship because I have failed in front of them. So I have to model in front of them, and modeling it in front of them is not telling them; it's demonstrating it. Uh, and so uh, I am uh, intentional how it is that I treat my ex wife, mm -hmm. uh, but I also want them to see what they should expect when it's time for them to get married. Cause I don't want them to adjust to dysfunction. How did you, did, how did you forgive her? Forgive after, who? Um, your ex-wife when she went on to a public stage. Yeah. I mean, fully aware of who you are in the earth. Yeah. You have to have in context. I forgive her for exposing what I did to her. Mm -hmm. that, that's the arrogance of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She'd have no story if I didn't give her the storyline. Uh, and so I'm, I'm accountable. I heard, hmm, in, in, <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm accountable for giving the story. Mm -hmm. I should have never given the cocked weapon to her. Um, but you know, the, the enemy had a round of applause, uh, thinking that uh, you can use that area of somebody's brokenness. Let's tell all of that. Uh, Caesar Clark, one of my favorite uh, preachers, uh, he's since passed. He's uh, out of <clears> Dallas, <throat> Texas. I tell you the story. He went through a divorce years ago in the eighth. Where of who you are in the earth? Yeah, you have to have in context. Forgive her for exposing what I did to her. Mm -hmm. that, that's the arrogance of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she'd have no story if I didn't give her the storyline. Uh, and so I'm, I'm accountable. I heard him. In, in, <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm accountable for giving the story. Mm -hmm. I should have never given the cocked weapon to her. Um, but you know, the, the enemy had a round of applause, uh, thinking that uh, you can use the area of somebody's brokenness. Let's tell all of that. Okay, so I wanted you guys to hear that part. This is Pastor Jamal Bryant answering the questions. How have you been, you went through the divorce and the situation here you are? So this is Pastor Jamal Bryant just acknowledging. Yes, whatever, you know, my his, his actions of, uh, you know, cheating on his wife put the wife in that situation to where it was a story all over the place. Okay, so once again, but he never stepped down from ministry. He's still a senior pastor at his church, okay? And to me, I'm like, what are we doing, okay? Mm. <clears throat> but this is in Atlanta. They love their pastor. Be that as it may, just like, okay, when you find yourself in this situation, not only that, you ended up cheating, you, uh, you are, you're divorced from your wife. Now he's about to get married again. But he's still in church. According to him, he repented and everything, which I, you know, I believe that he repented. But what about stepping down from the pulpit? What about from stepping down from the ministry? No, they don't want to step down from the ministry. Okay. They just want to step down from the ministry for a season and they want to come back. Okay. But what is it? You know, like, remember the church, right? To leave the men of the church, the elders of the church to be very, to be qualified, not to find themselves in, you know, things of this nature, okay? This is um, 
Paul telling Timothy, I hope to come to you soon, but I'm writing these things to you so that if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of truth. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. Okay? So the church is the pillar and buttress of truth. There is a way of how one ought to conduct themselves in the household of God. This is not just you when you go to church on a Sunday. Okay? This is, this is this, how the church is organized. Because this is Paul is telling Timothy, right? Who is an elder of a church. Like, you know, you need to set things in order in the church. So people like, you know, what uh, uh, Jamal Bryant wouldn't qualify for an elder at all. Because he disqualified himself. He's well-learned, articulate, good speaker. But those things, you're disqualified. But we don't believe uh, in the scriptures anymore, right? People do whatever they want to do to advance whatever their agenda they're advancing. So it's very unfortunate, but this is the situation that we're in. So let's uh, listen a little bit more. Uh, out of Dallas, Texas. I'll tell you the story. He went through a divorce years ago in the 80s. Went online. President. No, went online. <clears throat> and uh, he goes to court, Willie. And uh, they're in the final proceedings of the divorce. And the judge says to Dr. Clark, your ex-wife wants... Uh, your vacation house in Florida. Do you want her to have it? Dr. Clark said, yeah, let her have it. So Dr. Clark, your wife wants the Mercedes. Do you want her to have it? So yeah, let her have it. Dr. Clark, your wife wants your pension because you used to be in the military. Do you want her to have it? Dr. Clark said, yeah, I want her to have it. The judge says, wait a minute, Dr. Clark, you ain't got to give her all of this. You can fight for some of this. I'm just telling you what you want. You ain't got to give it to her. Dr. Clark said, do you notice what she didn't ask me for? The judge says, no, what didn't she ask you for? She didn't ask for my Bible. If you leave me with my Bible, I can get all of that again. Whew. You got to have the mind frame. <laughs> I ain't hey. fighting over no material stuff yeah. if I'm claiming he's Jehovah Jireh. Whatever it is that somebody can take, God can give it back to you. And so I'm at that level of peace that nobody can take anything away from me if God wants me to have it. Katie, what manner of man is this? <laughs> I know, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Okay, so that was, you know, um, Jamal Bryant articulating his story of one of his, uh, one of his friends find himself, okay, you, another pastor, another, getting another divorce in those, in those situations. So I think we have normalized that a, a pastor can be anybody. It doesn't matter if they have fallen out of sin, right? We are not saying that God cannot forgive them. That's not the issue, right? They can definitely be forgiven. But because of your sin, and this sin involved sexual immorality, you disqualify yourself from the pulpit. You are still a member of the church. You need to come to church, be participating in those things, but you cannot be a, a, a leader, okay? Because you are, you are leading the ship, okay? Now, if you're in this situation, if somebody comes in like, oh, pastor, I'm going through divorce, what counsel are you going to give that person? What reason are you going to give that person to still stay in their marriage, but you find yourself? You see what I'm saying? So that's why it is very important that the purity of the pulpit has to be maintained. So now the other issue that I notice also that's happening at the Jamal Bryant's church. They are so busy in, they are heavy on doing, um, what do we call... How do I say this? Um, community. Okay? Can a church, the, the most important thing of the church, the, the roles of a pastor, what are the responsibility of a pastor is to shepherd the flock. What are you doing when you're shepherding the flock? You are feeding the flock. This is what Jesus told Peter, right? Peter, feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. That is the number one responsibility of a pastor is to feed the sheep. How are you feeding the sheep is preaching the word of God. That's why the scripture, those, an elder must be able to teach. And you're just not teaching whatever, right? You're teaching sound doctrine. That is the priority of the church. Your priority is to your congregation, that local congregation. You're feeding them the word of God. These are the things that you're doing there. Okay, in the local church. Then if you're doing the ministry outside, right? You know, you have to go out 
um, Matthew 28, right? But you're not doing Matthew 28 at the expense of the church. Your church comes first. So one thing that I've noticed with Jamal Bryant, they are very heavy on activities, community, okay? But the church, the church that he has, like when you see his people there, they're having divorce, people are just... There's girlfriends. It's just, it's just all over the place. He has women pastors, but they are still doing things within the community. Okay? The, the good things they're doing in the community, those are good things in the community. But what profits a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Okay? So it's good to have those things, but you need to have a good foundation at the church, a good solid at church. So this is what they're doing at their church, okay? I'm going to play this video, then I'll make the commentary, okay? The groundbreaking ceremony of our innovative mini home community, the Benison. I knew with over 250 acres, God got something else in mind. We have allocated 33 acres on our property, breaking ground on 150 mini houses right on our campus. Oh, come on, y'all ain't shouting right. Benison means blessing and goodwill. Only 42% of black people in America are homeowners. Uh, as a consequence, that means over 65% of the people in our community are paying rent. Witness the dawn of a new chapter in home ownership designed to bridge wealth disparities and empower the black community with an affordable entry into a prosperous future. These houses uh, will start at $150,000. Discover our meticulously crafted homes ranging from 650 to 1,200 square feet, offering style, space, and quality without compromise. This event marks the beginning of creating generational wealth for families, singles, and retirees alike. Phase two of our housing development will be senior housing. I need somebody. Envision the future as we unveil plans for 75,000 square feet of dynamic retail space set to infuse the city of Stonecrest with a vibrant blend of shopping, dining, and essential services. Amphitheaters, serene water features, and food truck havens, all designed to foster community and celebration. I hear the sound of homeowners in this room that believe I'm going to leave something to my children's children, that God is going to do something absolutely amazing. May 4th is not just a about breaking ground. It's about laying the groundwork for dreams to flourish and pathways to success to be illuminated for all. Let's come together to celebrate this groundbreaking moment. Welcome to the future where dreams find a home and pathways to prosperity are paved for everyone. See you at the Benison. Okay, so as you can see, right, that's um, the project that Jamal Bryant is doing. The, the Benison, this is their church, right? They're building the houses. They want to build generation worth. They want to help the communities, all those things. Those things, are they bad things? No, they're not bad things. But that is not the, res that is not the responsibility of the church. Okay? So now you find yourself that you're busy doing all those projects right? People are building this generation worth. People are getting this uh, housing, but they are, they, are, they are not transformed inside, okay? They are not transformed inside because you're so busy. I'm like, okay, want to make sure these people have a place, right? They actually have a clinic at their church, which is actually a good thing because people who don't have insurance at their church, they are able to access those things, right? Those are good things. So that's why it's very difficult for most Christians, like what you're doing, you're doing charity work. Okay. You're doing, you're doing charity work, but you're not doing, uh, the mission. Okay. Like, you know, the great commission, right? This is the mandate that God has given to the church. Go out there and make disciples of all nations, right? Baptize them in the name of the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. The great commission, that is the responsibility of the church. That is the mission of the church. But when you're going out there, you're building house projects and everything. <clears throat> now, you're, you're not doing the Great Commission. You're doing the charity work. Okay? What is the difference? <clears throat> An atheist can do what Jamal Brandt is doing. They can build affordable housing homes. A Muslim can build affordable housing homes. Okay? Anybody can do those things. That's why there is a distinction of what a church must be doing. Now, if the members of uh, New Birth Church want to do a project, <clears throat> they can do a project. 
These are the members of the church, right? They want to build, they can do all those things. But when you have your church, get involved to be doing like, okay, now as a church, you're doing this. It becomes an issue. So now what happens uh, if Jamal Brandt is no longer a pastor at no birth? What happens to those houses? You see what I'm saying? Like there's a thin line that they are walking over here and given that they don't have a sound church where the word of God is being preached, that's a problem, to be quite honest, okay? I'll be like, okay, you know, if that was, um, uh, if that was us, it's pro, we're not doing that, I'll be like, oh, you know, he's a sound teacher, okay? Like, it's, it's whatever, you know what I'm saying? But you have like Jamal Brand, then you're doing these things. Now you're going to attract people who are going to come to your church. Are those people coming to your church to hear the word of God being preached out of the pulpit? Or they are coming to your church because they want the benefits that your church is providing? Are they going to come to your church because now they know they'll be the recipients of those housing? So that's the danger, okay? The primary role of the pastor is to feed the sheep you are to preach the word of God. You are to uh, you are taking care of their souls. Okay, if there's people in the church they want to do business, they want to do projects, by all means, do it. Build those townhouses, build all those things. But I hope you guys you you you're getting the point that I'm um, I'm making. Okay, I need somebody to help me. Thank God. If you're a tither, you should be making some noise. I'm talking about you. I am uh, appreciative for those of you who are not a member of our New Birth community, uh, but you are part of our larger community, and I'm thankful uh, that you came on this day. I've got three special friends who are here uh, with me on today. They flew in all the way from New York uh, just to be with us on today. Uh, Sean, Curtis, Damian, if you'll lift up your hands for me, please. Would you give them a big shout out? I so this lady right here, this is the uh, Jamal Bryant's co-pastor, Karitana, who is now jo uh, Jamal Bryant's fiance. I'm so grateful, so grateful. If you are a visitor, you don't go to New Birth, but you're out here today. Would you raise your hand? You don't go to New Birth, and you don't go. Lift that hand. You don't go to New Birth, but you're here. Lift that hand high. The doors of the church are open. When the church is heavy in doing charity work, the gospel takes the back seat. The gospel takes back seat. Now, because you are doing that type of work in the community, you think that what you're doing is helping because your church is packed, the church is full, people are coming in, they're attending the church, but you are, uh, people are not converting. You see what I'm saying? Like the people who are sitting in those pews, their hearts, they're not transformed. They're just Christians in name only. They are not uh, truly genuine believers. To me, these are the things that I've seen. When a church is heavy on quote-unquote community work, community savings. Okay, we, the church has to be generous. You can do charity work, you can do things, but the, there's a thin line there is uh, what I wanted to share. But to me, if your church is not, you know, is lacking in the spiritual maturity of your members, but you haven't doing charity work, I think it's time to pause that charity work, that community work, focus on the church, uh, let your church grow in maturity and everything, and then, you can go out there and save the community and do all those things, right? The church, we are to be generous. We are to help the poor. We are to do those things. But we cannot do those things at the expense of the mandate of the church, right? The mandate of the church. Don't forget that, right? It's a great commission, yeah? Keep, you know, pray for one another. Pray for one another. Pray for your pastor. You need to be praying for your pastors because they are just human beings as you and I. So pray for them that uh, the Lord will keep them, that they will not fall. Because like whatever church you go to, if your pastor finds himself in a sin, it's going to affect you. It's going to affect you, right? So pray for them. And the enemy knows where to go, right? He brings that guy down, the, everything else is going to be shaken. Everything else is going to be shaken, okay? So, yeah, so pray for your pastors, okay? All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram, X, and uh, Facebook. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.